Well, welcome everybody. We ready to honor the Lord tonight? Jesus. Lord, we want to focus in on your presence. Lord, we didn't come here tonight just to hear a man speak. We came here, Lord, to do you honor. We came here, Lord, to bless your name. Jesus, Lord, settle us in as we invite your presence. Settle us in. Can we just invite the Lord's presence together? Everybody focused? Conversation settling out. Jesus. Jesus. It's just you, Lord Jesus. There's no other. No other voice, no other presence. Just you. Just you.
up tonight, Jesus. Quicken in us your spirit, Lord. Lord, quicken us as one body, Jesus. As one people here in unity, Lord. Quicken us, God. Gather us, Lord. Gather us, Lord. Gather us. Jesus, 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 Jesus,
in freedom Thank you. 
you at your word. The world's on top of you, and you don't know what to do. Stand upon the promises of God. If you're tempted to despair, you just got to hang in there. Stand upon the promises of God. Don't give in. Stand on my promises. Don't give in. Take me at my word. Don't give in. Stand on my promises, will you take me at my word? Yes, we'll take you at your word. If you see your hopes and dreams getting smashed to smithereens, stand upon the promises of God. The future's looking black Don't you take to looking back Stand upon the promises of God Don't give in Stand on my promises Don't give in Take me at my word Don't give in Stand on my promises Will you take me at my word Yes, we'll take you at your word. Though you've been defeated, never known defeat. Back into the battle, walked with willing feet. Problems can't be solved, and they're getting to and go. Stand upon the promises of God. If there's danger all around, you can find no safer ground. Stand upon the promises of God. Don't give in. Stand on my promises, don't give in, take me at my word, don't give in, stand on my promises, will you take me at my word, don't give in, stand on my promises, don't give in, take me at my word, don't give in, stand on my promises, will you take me at my word. Yes, we'll take you at your word. Yeah. <sighs> uh, we're doing this song, I'm arguing with the Lord because I didn't plan this, but it won't go away. I keep saying, Lord, it's going to take too long. There's too many people here. But uh, some of you know what's coming, don't you? New Song Ministry Team. I need you up here forming two lines facing each other. For those who don't know what we're about to do, this is called a fire tunnel. What you're going to do is you're going to come in the fire tunnel from that side. You're going to come down through the middle. These people are going to just bless you as you go through. You're going to feel the power build up as they go through. You're going to feel the blessing build up. And here's my caution. You may not be able to get through it. You might find yourself crawling, and that's fine. But above all, you got to move, okay? And if you fall down, one of these nice people will drag you along. 
Are you ready? You're going to come in from that side. Go through the middle, right? Release the fullness of your spirit. Shekinah glory come. Shekinah glory come. Release the fullness of your spirit. Shekinah glory come. Shekinah glory come. And if you don't get wasted the first time through, come back for another run.
presence, presence. I can't get enough of your presence. I can't get enough of your presence, presence. I can't get enough, can't get enough. I can't get enough of your presence, presence. I can't get enough of your presence, presence. Can't get enough of your presence, presence. Can't get enough, can't get enough.
presence, can't get enough of your presence, presence, can't get enough of your presence. Just sink into the presence of the Lord.
to serve Here you still choose me And I choose to serve One more for the last of you, are you ready?
while they're finishing up down there. You should see some of your faces out there. It's like, these people are crazy. I don't know if I'm coming back here. Yes. All right, I'm going to talk quick because I don't, because really Jeremiah's got a lot to give us tonight. And aren't you glad it's Saturday night? <laughs> you know, if we were a bunch of drunks, we wouldn't even think about going home till after midnight, would we? And some of you are a bunch of drunks anyway, and that's a good thing, so. All right. Ha. Ah. I've said this before many times, we never, ever, 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 ever charge for a conference in this place because we never want to charge for the gospel, we never want to cut anybody off. And uh, so it's free, but conferences are never really free because we have to be able to fly Jeremiah in and uh, there are expenses associated with this. And actually we have some guests with us tonight that um, um, we brought up at our church's expense uh, from the Navajo Reservation. Stand up real quick there. All right. Come on, stand up with him. That's Thomas, <laughs> Thomas and Verlinda Yazzie. They come up from, uh, actually, we've, we ordained Thomas, what is it, two years ago now? Down on the Navajo Reservation? Yeah. So it was th how long? Three? Am I that old? <laughs> Three. All right. Let's see, what, what, I got some other friends here tonight. Where did, um, yeah, we're at Norm Chase and, and Colette. Yeah, Norm's over there. That's my friend. All right. That's Pastor Norm Chase. His wife is hiding out over here. They have given me the privilege of teaching my prophetic school to their church, and I'm, it's been a delight. It's grateful. I mean, I'm grateful, so. All right. All right, we're gonna, we, so it's not free. We've got to take an offering. If you want to, it, it, will all go, it will all go to Jeremiah. It'll cover expenses, and then it'll go to Jeremiah to support his ministry and uh, all that sort of stuff. If you want to write a check, you can write it to New Song Church, and that way you get a tax deduction. Otherwise, everybody likes cash. So, Lord, just bless this offering. Amen. Quick. All right, good. Um, Sounds like you got to mute one of those bikes. <laughs> anyway, I want to give away some stuff. Jeremiah gave away some stuff last night. Um, we have some, yeah, go ahead and take that offering. We have some, um, we have live worship albums here that we recorded live here, and there are other stuff we've recorded in the studio. There's like 14 albums all together. This is our most recent live worship album. Who wants one? Uh oh. <laughs> I think the one in the glasses was first. There you go. <laughs> but you can get those in the bookstore. They're, they're back there, and they're cheap. They're like 12 bucks. Every year I give an annual prophetic word. This word was, this year was so big that it came in two parts. It took two weeks to give it. Uh, but I managed to edit it down onto both lessons, I mean, both, both messages on a DVD. And there are some DVDs in the bookstore. You can pick those up. Cheap DVD, 10 bucks, right? 
Um, I can't throw this because it isn't yet shrink-wrapped and it will fall out. You attend here. Give me a break. <laughs> Who gets this? Okay. <laughs> okay. And my most recent book, Visions of the Coming Days. This is to prepare the body of Christ for what is coming. And I'm going to give it... Yep, there she's bouncing up and down in the back. All right, we'll do that. Ah, there we go. Okay, all that's available in the bookstore. And I'm not going to waste any more time. You know, I didn't... When the Lord says, he was saying, do a fire tunnel. I said, no, it's going to take too long. But he really thinks this is his house. <laughs> so, all right, come on up, Jeremiah. I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm just going to give it right to you. Good evening. I love conferences and meetings with fire tunnels because I feel like I don't have to prophesy or lay hands on anyone. <laughs> So thank you. I can rest tonight. <laughs> People are like, no, no, no. Well, I'm uh, just really enjoying my time here in Denver and uh, really believing God to take us to that next level and uh, really believing that he's wanting to stretch us. I even believe what the Lord was prompting uh, for Lauren to do tonight fits right in. Uh, to the message and just before I dive in there real quick I have a just some products that I brought with me I know a lot of them uh, I think several of them have already sold out I couldn't bring that much but if you have time and want to stop by um, I just have recently written and published a book called I see a new prophetic generation and this book is a, a picture of what I believe is coming in the prophetic movement. It's going to be a separation of the true prophets of God and the false prophets of God. It says in Jeremiah 27, 18, if they be prophets, let them make intercession. And I really believe that what's going to separate true prophets of God from false ones is a prayer life intimacy secret time with God we've got to get away from this standing up in front of people and giving them words uh, that's like 10 percent of it uh, the Lord is inviting us into intimacy with him abiding in him that we can produce much fruit who can I bless this with oh it bounced cool and then this, uh, just another one, there's a lot more out there. Uh, this one is always on my heart. It's called Discipline, the Love of the Heavenly Father Revealed. And the Lord gave me a word, and he said, I'm positioning the bride of Christ to a place where they will receive my discipline and not interpret it as rejection. And the reason why there, there's such a distortion of what love is, and many people cannot receive hard words from the Lord because they don't see them as drawing them to him. They see it as pushing uh, it away from them because there's a father wound that they carry. And um, who can I bless this with? I love this quote on the back, Susanna Wesley. Everybody loves John Wes Wesley. I, I love to study his mother. She said, the parent who studies to subdue the self-will of their child works together with God in the renewing and saving of their soul. But the parent who indulges the self-will of their child does the devil's work, makes religion impossible, salvation unattainable, and does all that they can to damn their child to hell. Anybody? <laughs> They're like, anybody rebellious in here? Yes, Lord. I, got to I hate to interrupt him, but there's one thing I just remembered I have to say, because if I don't say it, you're all going to be messed up. You were handed a brochure that said we're on at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. That is inaccurate. We are here at 6. Okay? 6 o'clock tomorrow night. I'm sorry. I didn't want to interrupt Jeremiah, but if I don't say that, some of you are going to show up at 7. That's not good. So, Thank you, Lauren. Well, if you would, would you just stretch out your hands to the Lord and just want to seek the Holy Spirit I'm gonna be preaching a message tonight on the more 
Father, we just come before you tonight and we just ask for grace to drink deeply. Lord, we just thank you. What's coming to me is blessed are the flexible for they shall not be broken. Lord, some seasons brokenness is the goal. Other seasons stretching is the goal. Lord, we just submit our spirits Even as we talked last night and we say, not our will, but yours be done. Lord, I I pray a special prayer for those of us that are on cruise control and we don't know it. Lord, some of us um, have found a knack because we've been around the things of the Spirit for a long time and we have settled in and you're asking us to go deeper in this season. And I just pray for fresh grace, for fresh encounters. Lord, that we would not settle. God, I'm so thankful, but I'm forever unsatisfied. Lord, we're so thankful for all those encounters, Lord, where you've come and poured out your love, your affection upon us. I pray that it would stir us for more, not to settle, but to ask for more. And just even hear that the Lord is saying that he's going to teach this region about what it means to pray as a bride and not a beggar. Father, we thank you that we can come before you and listen to what Jesus is praying and partner with that prayer and release it upon the earth. Lord, we don't have to pray alone. God, I just ask you tonight, Jesus, what are you praying over Denver? Let's not waste any time. Let's not waste our prayers. Jesus, what are you praying over this region? Lord, let us come into agreement with that as the bride and release it and see power come forth. We thank you, Lord. We just thank you for the houses of prayer that are going to be birthed in this region. Father, we just thank you that this region has a destiny of harp and bowl worship. God, we thank you. God, we say let incense arise from the throne. Lord, we thank you for those seasons of soaking. God, but I pray for corporate intercession to take full effect here. Lord, raise up men and women that can really grab hold of your purposes and contend day and night until your will is done in this region. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If I have a title for this message, it's going to be called Never Lord, colon, The Cry of the Religious Spirit. Never Lord, colon, The Cry of the Religious Spirit. I believe that God in this hour is wanting to take our ceilings and turn them into footstools. I believe whatever ceiling we've hit in the spirit, whatever limitations that we have reached in our walk with Christ, and again, I realize there's a thing called spiritual blindness. That's why Jesus taught on what it means to be poor in spirit, because there are times when we have to ask God to strike us with our spiritual bankruptcy. God, show me how much I need you. You know, God likes to take a disease called helplessness, and instead of curing us of it, he makes it the gateway to the kingdom of heaven. (laughs) I said it last night. Do we want to be Bible believers or American dreamers? God takes this thing called helplessness and rather than deliver us from it, he makes it the gateway to the kingdom. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Proverbs says that there are those that flatter themselves too much to detect their own sin. So the father is desiring for us to say yes again. It's had that season, you know, I have them reoccurring where I just feel like I've, I've got that encounter. I'm going deeper and the Lord says, but there's more. And you journey on and then there's more because we serve an inexhaustible fountain that never runs dry. 
And there's always more than what we're experiencing. And talking to some people that received ministry last night, they ran into the more. But I, can I just encourage you not to settle there? Several years ago when Bob Jones was still alive, I had a dream. And part of my journey in the Lord is oftentimes I'll have many prophets come visit me and deliver me messages and so many of them I, I have not yet met in person but I feel like I ha already have their mail uh, because the Lord has already shown me so many things and oftentimes when Bob was alive he'd come and visit me and one particular dream that I had that I want to share as we get into this message is I walked up to Bob Jones and what I said to him in the dream is I said Bob is that you you apocalyptic prophet you and he said, boy, I'll give you an apocalyptic prophecy. Turn to the book of Galatians chapter 3. So if you have your Bibles tonight, I'd like for you to go to Galatians chapter 3. And just very simply, apocalyptic has to do with the end times. Just very simply, I'm not going to get all into it. But I believe that I, I had this encounter with Bob Jones several years ago when he was alive. And he was releasing a message to the end time church and relaying it to me. And I believe that God in, in some ways wants to encourage us tonight, but in other ways wants to warn us of what we might see happen if we don't sound the alarm. So Galatians chapter 3 and, and the verse that Bob spoke to me out of was verse 3. It says, Are you so foolish? Very seeker friendly there. Having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? And Bob began to share with me revelation and he said that there are many people in the charismatic Pentecostal movement that at one time had an experience of the Spirit. And what's going to happen is deception is going to come over them and their walk with Christ is going to turn from being Spirit-led to being one where they're working and they're striving according to the flesh. I just wonder how many of us, our walk with Christ was birthed from an encounter and now we're on cruise control. You know, one thing that I found really unhelpful when it comes to growing in Christ is comparing myself to others. You want to cap off your anointing? Just start hanging around people that are unanointed. You'll feel good about yourself. And you'll become deceived. <laughs> See, one of the problems is that we're not surrounding ourselves with believers that are pressing us to go forward. I believe many people are committing spiritual abortion. We're aborting the purposes of God for our lives because we're hanging around people, quite frankly, that aren't interested in running hard after God. And we in this hour must keep our eyes fixed upon Jesus. It's Him and Him alone that must become our measuring line. Not our pastor, not the, the guest prophet, not our spouse. I, I wonder if there are those of us tonight that need to re-engage the Lord and fix our eyes upon Him and ask Him, Jesus, are you calling me to go deeper? Let me answer that, yes. We're farther ahead than others. I, I've, I've been around, I see this as I travel in many saints that have been around a long time. They've been there, they've done that, they've been around that. And I feel like the Lord has said to me so many times, some people in the charismatic Pentecostal church were trying so hard not to be religious that we've become religious. You know, it's amazing in, in revival services that you can predict what the revival service is going to do. Right? Because we, we claim in charismatic Pentecostal we've had an experience. 
We've come into contact with the Holy Spirit. We're in relationship. We've been freed from dry, dead religion. And many of us, what, what that meant is we've broken free from the ritual. We've broken free from the routine. But in most spiritual churches, it's all about a ritual and a routine. Hallelujah. We've developed models even in the supernatural. Here's one through ten. Here's how to be supernatural. Give me a break. Let's abide in Jesus and let him do the rest. So we're going to camp out in Acts 10. And what I found in studying the book of Acts is there's a clear shift in the book of Acts. And I know William, William Barclay and many other scholars agree. Probably the clearest shift in the book of Acts is found in chapter 10. And where I'm coming from tonight is I believe God came and challenged Peter and said, Peter, there's more. And Peter said, mm, Lord, I've given you a lot, but I'm not going to give you this. And it really does blow me away as we begin to get into this. If God would come to Peter, he's already had the upper room experience. They've seen the blind, crippled beggar healed. They've raised the dead. They've seen so much supernatural activity. And if God is going to come to Peter and challenge him for the more, how much more you and I? <laughs> let, let no one walk out of here as a revival expert. Let's not say that we've been around so long. I get this all the time. People, it's our spiritual pride that, that's, that's literally blinding us from the more that God has for us. You know, there's danger in building memorials to what God has done without having a present altar built to what He's doing now. There's danger in building memorials to what God has done in the past without having present altars built to what He's doing now. How many people know it's been a while since Toronto? It's, it's been a while since Brownsville. But people talk about it like it happened yesterday because they've got no fresh oil today. You know, some of the, the, the greatest hindrances, some of those people that, that, that are a stumbling block to present day revival are the people that were in the last one because they think they know how it's going to go. Oswald Chambers, he says, anytime you think you have God in a box, he's going to get out of it and go somewhere else. So I'm just asking as we dive in to be poor in spirit, to say, Lord, I'm in need of you tonight. I don't know anything. I'm not, I'm not, not going to compare myself to anyone. God, I want to walk out of here with a fresh encounter of who you are. Amen. Acts chapter 10, God comes to Peter and he says, there's more. Now, there was a certain man at Caesarea named Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian cohort, a devout man and one who feared God with all his household and gave many alms to the Jewish people and prayed to God continually. About the ninth hour of the day, he clearly saw in a vision an angel of God who had just come into him and said to him, Cornelius... And fixing his gaze upon him and being much alarmed, he said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and alms have ascended as a memorial before God. And now dispatch some men to Joppa and send for a man named Simon, who is also called Peter. He is staying with a certain tanner named Simon, whose house is by the sea. And when the angel who was speaking to him had departed, he summoned two of his servants and a devout soldier of those who were in constant attendance upon him. Just hang with me. And after he had explained everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. And on the next day, as they were on their way and approaching the city, Peter went up to the housetop about the sixth hour to pray. And he became hungry and was desiring to eat. 
But while they were making preparations, he fell into a trance. And he beheld the sky opened up and a certain object like a great sheet coming down, lowered by four corners to the ground. And there were in it all kinds of four-footed animals and crawling creatures of the earth and birds of the air. And a voice came to him and said, Peter, arise, kill and eat. And Peter said, Lord, that sounds great. That was just what I had in mind. That was the perfect box that I had you in. Peter says, never, Lord. I have never. God forbid that he'd ask us to do something that we've never done. (laughs) Never, Lord. For I have never eaten anything unholy and unclean. And again a voice came to him a second time. What God has cleansed no longer call unholy. And this happened three times. And immediately the object was taken up into the sky. Now while Peter was greatly perplexed in mind as to what the vision was he had seen. Behold the men who Cornelius had sent. Having asked directions from Simon's house appeared at the gate. And calling out, they were asking whether Simon, who was called Peter, was staying there. And I'll just speed it up for you. But the men that Cornelius had sent basically relay to Peter what had happened. And it says that that Peter went with them to Caesarea. And he has an encounter with them. And basically the encounter, very simply, that's happening is God is intervening in Peter's life. And he's saying the gospel is for the Gentiles too. He's coming and he's addressing a mindset. He's coming and he's releasing a shift. And it's so interesting to me, this always seems to happen in verse 45. And all the circumcised believers who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out upon the Gentiles too. I mean, what an opportunity to celebrate what God is doing. Praise God that we cried out for revival, but it came to a different church in our city. Hallelujah. Mm. (laughs) Help us, Lord. Chapter 11, now the apostles and the brethren who were throughout Judea heard the Gentiles also had received the word of God. When Peter came up to Jerusalem, those who were circumcised took issue with him. Instead of celebrating the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and what God began to do in others, they could not get beyond the religious spirit. It's interesting to me, I'm going to draw some points and really challenge us and just ask the Holy Spirit to come tonight. It's interesting to me with all the phenomenal activity that's happening in Acts 1 through 9, is it not strange that God wanted to do a new work, but he couldn't break into the existing structure of church? With all that they had seen, with all that they had heard, with all the history. Again, we're talking about Peter, the most well-versed man probably in that day. Paul just got saved in the chapter before, but just the guy, the pinnacle of, of Christian faith and encounter with God. Is it not strange that God has to use a man named Cornelius There's a debate on whether he's saved or not. But regardless, he wasn't even part of the church. I've often wondered, I wonder if what it's going to take to shift the church into the more that God has is him beginning to awaken unbelievers and them stumbling into the church. And it's not us that has the fresh encounter, it's them. (laughs) I mean, it's scary to think of, but beloved, we could be way behind the grind. 
Don't let your pride tell you you can't be. You know, I remember praying for Lakeland, the city where I'm from, and, and crying out to God and asking him, Lord, where are the anointed vessels? Where are the revivalists? And he said, they're living in darkness. Go get them. I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, the most anointed people in this city don't know me right now. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is addressing tonight this thing where we have an encounter and then we fall back into religion. We have an experience. We develop relationship, but that somehow along the way, our walk is becoming dry. We, you know, I, I talk a lot to people. I think most people admit that salvation is a work of God. You can get most people to believe that unless the Father draws them, they're not coming. But it's almost like we admit that God is the one who initiates salvation. But then it's like we tell him we've got it from here. Like we believe in that encounter at salvation. But Lord, thank you very much. I've got it here. And I'm going to dictate my course and I'm, I'm going to, I wonder some of us if the encounter that we had with Christ at salvation, I wonder if that was the, the, it's almost like that was the measuring line of further encounters. I wonder how farther along we could be because most of us, we get these radical encounters with Christ and then we get into the church and become sophisticated we have to act a certain way. We have to do the religious thing. And one of the things the Lord has shown me is that I believe pastors have killed off an entire generation of fiery evangelists in the church. Had all these, these people that got radically saved and they're full of the fire of God and they come in the doors of the church and instead of stoking their fire, we put it out. Because, wait a minute, they had more fire than we did as a pastor. Jesus, raise up fathers in the body of Christ that aren't going to stomp out the fire. They're going to see the fire in others and get stoked to go deeper themselves. See, because a radical calling requires radical accountability. And so many of us, we get hit by the fire of God and we get that encounter and then we submit ourselves to lukewarm leadership. And sooner or later, we're wondering where our fire is. I always warn people, unless you've got a word from God, be careful. I said it this morning, I feel like saying it again. You know, the, the Lord has shown me that there is an entire generation of intercessory prophetic people like Samuel who are still mourning over Saul. The, these men and women that have lost the anointing of God because they're on cruise control. Building the kingdom in the name of the kingdom and it's their own kingdom. The Lord is saying to many people, how long will you mourn for them? Move on. I've got a new assignment for you. If you're taking notes, I'd just like to encourage you with this. No matter how good we are at hearing God, how quick we are to act in obedience, there is more of God available for you than what you are currently experiencing. No matter how good we are at hearing God, how quick we are to act in obedience, there is more of God available for you than what you're currently experiencing. If you're not experiencing the fire of God in your life, it's because nothing's on the altar. And as we mature in Christ, we'll get past that revelation and we'll start crawling up on the altar ourselves. All these believers I meet, I'm dry, I'm weary, I'm stale. What are you giving to God? Oh. The Lord has already said He's going to send fire down from heaven, but what are you giving Him to consume? 
Seriously, I found this. The quickest way to get back into that place of radical encounter is offer something to God. Your life is a great start. You know, I, I've got to be honest. A lot of encountering the more of God has required me to do radical things. Literally last year, I was looking back. Last year, I was, and, and again, I know we can encounter God in the secret place. I get all that language, that's great. But there are some times that I just can't stay away from the fire burning in certain parts of the country. I remember buying one-way tickets, $700 one way to jump in a revival one night and fly back the next day. You know, I hear so many people say, I can't afford I can't afford that. Listen, we can't afford not to. Oh, oh it, love it. Some of us got to get out of debt so we can move when God says move. I, I, don't, I don't ever want a bill to hinder me from going and getting that touch from God that leaves me burning for days and weeks and months. People, people ask me, you know, tell me your journey in the prophetic. I've got a, a journey in the prophetic, but it just got to that point where I needed to begin to get around real prophets of God and, and ask for an impartation and more. I was in college, and I literally w- was so poor. I, I heard about a conference, and I bought a, a round-trip airfare with the only money that I had. So I wind up in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, and I'm sitting in the airport with a sign that says, looking for a ride to the prophets conference. I've got zero dollars in my pocket, but I'm hungry for more. Love it. We've got to begin to let hunger drive us to go deeper. It's that insatiable craving that God, it's John G. Lake, he called it the God cry. If we're not hungry for more of God, it's not because we're drinking deeply. It's because we're stuffed on things of the world. We've got no appetite for God things because we're stuffed on good things. It's a little John Piper for you. A Hunger for God, one of the best books you can ever buy. I've read it 15 times. A Hunger for God by John Piper. A lifestyle of prayer and fasting. Fasting is one of the greatest weapons that God has given us in our journey to know God and hunger for more. So I sit in the the airport. I wrote about this in my new book. And this guy named Dave, a pastor from Illinois, picks me up, says, hey, I'm going. He paid for my, my hotel, my conference registration, my food. Had a blast with this guy. I'd go to the meetings at night and sit at bars at night and prophesy to people. <laughs> Remember, I was sitting in a bar in Mechanicsburg at 2 in the morning. I, I, I have a problem with, with uh, smoke smell. If you smoke cigarettes, no offense. But I'm sitting in this bar, and across the way, there's this guy in a neck brace. And the Lord says to me, he's a pastor, and he's running from me. I want you to confront him. See, my brother, older brother, was always a drunk, and I always knew where to find him at the bar. And I began to believe the more that I encountered people there that there were so many people with a radical calling that were drinking at the bar. And if he was there, I sure knew others. So I sit there, and I'm like, oh, God, send them, like, outside, or, you know, how is this going to happen? And five minutes, and I'm, I'm wheezing now. Both people are smoking to my left and the right. I'm just like, oh, God, I can't take much more of this. And I'm like, fine, God. So I went around the bar, and I, I just whispered in this guy's ear. I said, I know who you are. <laughs> and God tells me that you're running. And if you want your neck healed, I want you to walk outside of this bar in five minutes. So I walk outside, one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute. This is how God works with me. Four minutes, 59 seconds, he walks out the door. Man, and the power of God came and wrecked that guy. 
And he confessed his sins to the Lord, his wayward ways, and God instantly healed him and set him back on the path. But there was an infusion of power and anointing that I picked up there. there there's never a time where I've sacrificed where God hasn't answered. I just got to tell you that there's never anything insane that I've done that God hasn't come through in power and released the more. I, I, how do you think I met Lauren Sanford? I, I told this last, last night. I, I got on a plane and just showed up here. I had no, no history, nothing, just hungry for more prophetic dads. How bad do you want the more? What are you willing to pay? Are you, everyone wants revival, but no one wants to pay a price. Beloved, we can't lose. Because there's nothing that compares to knowing Christ. I'm telling you, some people got to waste their entire lives doing sex, drugs, and rock and roll to recognize there's nothing like a taste from God. I feel like the Lord just wants to prophetically say to some people tonight, you're wasting your time. If, if you're still chasing after what the world has to offer, you've not yet encountered the glory of God. There's a holy wounding that comes. Oh, man. God has wounded me where I can't settle for three songs and a nice message anymore. Dude, it's the worst and best thing that ever happens to you. How in the world people go back, I have no idea. There, there's just that place in God where literally nothing else will satisfy. And he could, takes you deeper and deeper and deeper. And then you start looking around. No, go deeper and deeper. And then you start looking around. No, go deeper. And just keep fixing your eyes on Jesus. And many people, it's... it's that it, you know, so many people, we want to see people around us encounter Jesus. Well, get started. How are they going to know the more unless you introduce it to them? Oh, God, I want a new job. Why do you think you're there? So many people are asking God to bail them out from the very atmosphere He sent you to contaminate with His glory. <laughs> We carry the kingdom within us. Listen, I'm the guy. I get invited a lot of places once and that's it. I'm just here to sow the seeds, baby. See ya. I, I'm, not, I'm not there to purposely offend them. But Jesus, he has the largest recorded crowd in history in John 6. And he takes the opportunity to tell them to drink his blood and eat his flesh. Good one, Jesus. Great job, man. Even his own disciples, they turn away from him. Hear me, Jesus was willing to drive away those that he loved on the issue of whether they would settle to come for him, to him for food and bread or if they would really want the bread of life. He fed them one time. He met their needs, but when they come back again to meet their needs, he says, no, I am what you're looking for. There comes a time and I walk, I'll walk with Christ where he will meet those elementary desires, but he's going to drive us to the place where only he satisfies. Lord. Only you satisfy. Laura Hackett Park, she sings the song, You Satisfy My Soul. Did I got that thing on repeat? 
God, I'm wounded. What am I doing here? Your word says that I'm an alien and a stranger in a foreign land. God, I don't fit in. That's right. We were never created to fit in. We were called to stand out. Dude, I, you just walk around and you're like, I just don't fit in. Yeah, because there's a God ache inside of you. And what will satisfy you won't satisfy them. But maybe they'll hunger for the more if we'll give ourselves to it. Maybe their breakthrough is dependent upon ours. Beloved, personal revival gives birth to corporate revival. So many people are waiting for a pastor or a church to get in with God. We've got to sell out now. I thank God for people in my life that make me feel like I'm not saved. I thank God for people in my life that make me feel lukewarm. Those are the people I want to surround myself with. Oh man, you ever get around those people you thought you were sold out until you met them? (laughs) You thought you prayed? (laughs) Here you go, Mike Bickle. (laughs) Beloved, but but that's, that's who we should feel attracted to. That's who we should surround. I want to get around people that hunger and burn for the kingdom. Oh God, that we would see a generation of young adults who get married, stop settling down and playing church, playing house. God gave you to one another so he could set you on fire. If you brought an anointing, getting married produces a double anointing. Well, let's settle down. What does that even mean? I meet so many single young adults on fire for Christ, and when they get married, it's over. Because now we got to make the most money. we got to have a little white picket fence and a house. And, beloved, if we don't have the fire, we don't have anything. What good will it do for Americans to live the American dream and miss the God dream? Look, you can have all that. Praise God, but I'm after more. I'm not into bashing people. I don't care what this church is doing. My message is there's more. We don't have, t- we don't have that much time. But I, I just really believe that some people are never going to encounter the more unless they meet you and I. So just what I want my life statement to be, dude, he just. And I tell people all the time, people ask me all the time, where are you going? I have no idea. Jesus, it, yeah, follow me. Uh, can you give me one to ten? Not really. But I'm not afraid to run after him anymore if I don't know the details. I'll let him take care of that. Because of his father, he knows best. So I just want to give you three points tonight that you can take home. And I want to pray for you. But I really believe that God is wanting to release hunger for more in this region. Whatever your personal level of encounter is, God wants to take you that much deeper. Number one, what does God want to do? Number one, from this Acts 10, He wants to help us recognize the shift. Anytime the Lord begins to shift things in our lives, I know for me and my wife, He's always coming after our money. Should we touch that one tonight? You know how many people I know that are completely sold out to God except their bank account? I keep prophesying to people, some people that literal tip in the iceberg for revival is your money. You can give God everything else besides that. It's like every time we got something saved, he's like, give it away. 5,000, 10,000. 
I, I keep asking people, what's really generous? John Wesley, he said, not how much of my money will I give to God, but how much of God's money will I keep for myself? You can't teach people to steward God's money unless they admit it's his. I'll come back and do that one next year. You, you can't teach people how to steward their life if they won't admit it's not my own. Beloved, the, just the simple reality tonight is some of us can't get into that deeper place because we won't let go of us. We've become our own God. Yeah, you go to church, so what? Thank you, bro. Appreciate that. <laughs> Don't worry. You have the same reaction as all the other parts of the country. But I'm telling you, some of us need to get delivered tonight from control of our finances and say, Lord, they're yours. I was in a meeting two years ago. I saw a woman write Randy Clark a check for $1 million. She did it with a smile on her face. I'm believing God for more money, but I'm believing God for more money to finance the kingdom. My, my kids aren't going to remember the, the nice car I bought them when they were 16 so much as they're going to remember I was home when they were growing up. And once you, once you give God an inch, He takes a mile, doesn't He? Man, don't you hate that? It's kind of it's like a love-hate relationship. Once you take a step toward Him, it's over. He's coming after it all. Bill Johnson, he says it real simply. He says, the deeper we go in God, the less we can take with us. <laughs> and again, it's, it's the most glorious place of just being stripped out of it all and just having God. When I sow money, I just ask God for more of Him. I want a deeper revelation. Thank you. We've got to recognize this shift when God comes and he asks us. We've got to focus on what it's going to release to us and not on what it's going to cost us. I just want to encourage you when God is taking you deeper, do not focus on what it's going to cost you. Hear me again. The rewards will far outweigh any cost that you'll ever give. I literally believe God spoke a word to me that what you one day consider a sacrifice, if you lean into me, I'll turn it into a desire. What if we could get past all of this? Oh, brother, I made such a sacrifice. I gave God my time. It was his anyways. Oh, I made such a sacrifice. I wrote the check, the church a check for 10000 Well, it was his anyways. See, we learn how to live our lives like this, not like this. It's the very reason why I, I don't watch TV anymore. And when I see a starving African baby, I don't feel guilty anymore. See, because that guilt is telling me my life is like this, not this. I'm telling you, that guilt and that shame that we feel, it's God telling us everything's not in my hands. I got so radically delivered and set free. Everything's on the table. God, what do you want? It's yours anyways. There's nothing that I have that's mine. It's all yours. So anything that you want from me, I'm just giving back to you anyways. What do you want? And the amazing thing about God is he's never asked us to give something he himself hasn't already given. I want you to love them. Oh, God, prove it. Oh, great, I sent my only son. God's already made the ultimate sacrifice. There's honestly nothing more he can give us. Have you ever thought about that? God's all in, are you? What an incredible journey we are on knowing God. 
Some of us in this room are leaping for joy and other people are ready for me to be quiet. You guys are getting blessed because during, during the revival in Virginia, I literally preached myself hoarse. I normally yell preaching through this the entire time. I couldn't yell if I wanted to. This is powerful stuff, but we've got to make it practical in our lives. Only you know the little G's called God's that God wants to smash tonight in his love. And I ministered to this guy prophetically in the back of a factory. I went and picked up t-shirts in Lakeland. And this guy came out. And it's like the Lord just wanted me to tell him, Hey, brother, there's so much more than a 9 to 5 in church on Sundays. He looked at me, What? I said, Man, there's so much more that God has for you than working a job and going to church on Sunday. And I said, come here, let me just impart it to you. I just laid hands on him and he fell out in the parking lot. <laughs> you know, my response when people say prophecy is not real is I always say, let me pray for you and then tell me if it's real or not. And I'm literally talking about walking in such a place of encounter that when people meet us, they have an encounter. What I found is there's a thing called encounters that lead to other encounters. There's no end in God. There's no restraints. There's no limitations. He just says, come and drink. (laughs) I just want to start repenting. God... What am I doing? Why have I settled? What's in my life that's hindering me from first love? I'd love to tell you a story, but we don't really have time. You can get my new book. Okay, I wrote about it. How's that? You know, I heard what God was doing with Bill Johnson in Redding, California. So if you know me, I said, hmm, let's go check it out. Oh, geez, the plane tickets are just save your money. He'll provide. Dude, I just put it before the Lord. He literally, I've been to Bethel numerous times and have never spent a dollar. Because God sent a businessman to me and said, I'll pay for it anytime you want to go out there. It's crazy. I tell you, I've been out there multiple times. I've stayed in the nicest hotels, flown first class. I mean, just the whole thing. Just because God saw my heart for more. And again, I'm not negating personal time with the Lord. I don't believe in the conference hopper thing, okay? Well, I want to, we hope you know me or just talked with Lauren. We share similar beliefs, rooted and grounded, that whole thing. We just got to the point, hey, God, if you're doing something, I want to be a part of it. You know, the desire to stay current with the Holy Spirit will, will send you on the most scary journey, but the most rewarding journey of your life. You know, to me, the heart of a prophetic person is, I don't want to miss out on what you're doing. Not here and not anywhere. <laughs> Not just here, but anywhere. I'm like, listen, I'm literally carrying this thing. If he's doing something in America, I want to see it. My, my philosophy is embrace Jesus wherever that you find him. Sure, I might not agree with 100% of their doctrine, but I bet there's an encounter out there waiting for me. We wind up in Redding, California. and Dude, I've had the most wild encounters out there. We go out there and, you know, we're in the prayer room, me and a few pastors and this business guy. And there's this, this father and these kids and this wife and the Lord gives me a word for him and he hits the floor and I go out to the car and the Lord says, invite them to lunch. And we end up inviting them to lunch and 
there was a, a team from Reading that had gone out to Switzerland and preached on the miracle signs and wonders, and him and his dad co-pastored a Baptist church, and he gets filled with the Holy Spirit and kicked out. And they literally are so hungry for more, but they don't know what to do. Oh, moving to California sounds like a good deal. We'll go with that. Sold everything that they had. He's got three beautiful daughters. They're out there in the school of ministry. And the Lord had given me a word of knowledge about the, the disagreement with his father and how, how God wanted to release healing to them. We get to lunch and do they've got a broken down van. They've got no money. We, we gladly pay for their meal and their daughter is sitting at the table and the Lord gives me a word of knowledge and says, I'm going to open up a door for the modeling and acting agency and it's going to be used to bless their family. So we pay for their meal and we get out into the parking lot. And the Lord just keeps saying to me, Jeremiah, there's more. I want them to leave here knowing that I love them. So the next thing that I could think of is I said, how, ma how many groceries do you have? They said, we've got no food. I said, great, let's go over to this Target. We walk into Target. It's so much fun to bless people, isn't it? We didn't get one cart. We got two. And me and these guys are literally just throwing the most expensive stuff we can. And they're just crying and I'm kid you not this is the fastest fulfilled word of prophecy I've ever heard of we walk into Target we go down aisle one there's a blonde woman that appears before us walks up to that mom and says I'm from a modeling and acting agency and that daughter right there I'm gonna give her a job to provide for you guys I mean I'm like this stuff is real <laughs> they're just encountering the goodness of God. But what if we had just settled for buying their lunch? And we start getting hungry for more encounters. And remember, it, it's costing us something, only money. It's God's, remember? Beloved, I wonder. I just feel this in my spirit. I wonder if our money is keeping us from more of God. I just feel that over this region. Maybe the great God here is mammon. So we get out to the car. We've got these groceries. They're just a wreck. And the next thing, how much gas do you have in this cruddy van? None. Let's go to the gas station. We go to the gas station. We're out get pumping them gas. I'll never forget it. A guy pulls up in a car, comes up behind us, just starts prophesying to us. Just releasing the word of the Lord. He starts prophesying to me, you're going to write books, but God knows who you are, all this different stuff. And the power of God falls so heavy, we're getting slain in the spirit at whatever Valero gas station in Reading. You know, something that's never left me is it was all about encounters that led to other encounters. If we had a stop, one step of the way and said oh God we'd had enough we would have never got more of the blessing and I just want to encourage you that God allows us to encounter him in deep ways to push us to deeper encounters there's no reason that we've got to settle or we've got to get into this works of the flesh. So God comes to Peter, and, he, and I, I have this in the season of the unfamiliar where we feel inadequate and we feel vulnerable. We've got to remember that sometimes being willing to do what we're unqualified to do qualifies us. I like to tell people if your local church you attend has not changed or transformed in the last several years, we've got to begin to question their corporate relationship with the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't say, I've come to give you meetings and meetings abundantly. He said, I've come to give you life. It is a wild journey, isn't it? What I considered deep five years ago, I now consider shallow. And I'm not going to waste any time bashing those people. I'm just going to be the more that they're looking for. <laughs> oh. 
Man, I've had so many great encounters, man. I just, oh my gosh. God has been so faithful to me. He has never let me down. He has never let me down. (laughs) People ask me all the time, how do you get invited to all these churches? I'm telling you, from radical encounters. I minister at this massive mega church in Peru, South America. Holy Spirit every year just completely blasts the place. How did that even happen? I prophesied to the pastor at a Moe's in Florida. Didn't even know who he was. I'm sitting in a booth and the Lord gives me a word for him. I walk right up to him. The power of God falls on him. He gets slain in the spirit. I'll never forget it right at the entrance to Moe's. He's like, give me a business card or something. He calls me six months later and says, dude, I'm a pastor in Peru. We've got to have you. I'm in Jerusalem in May 2014. I walk up to a pastor. I didn't know he was a pastor. I delivered him the word of the Lord. He, he says, hey, give me your contact information. He contacts me a few weeks later, and he says, hey, I pastor a mega church in Michigan, an Assemblies of God church, and when you prophesied to me, it brought a spirit of conviction upon me. He said this to me, I've been shutting down the movement of the Holy Spirit in my church for years because I was wounded by a prophetic word when I was a young man. And he said, because of your faithfulness to step out and you don't even know who I am, I go up to this church in Michigan last year and he says, I can't say prophecy or prophet because they'll, they'll totally reject you. So he introduced me the whole weekend as an evangelist. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I'll never forget their bulletin. It had my face on it and it said something like dynamic conference communicator. That's how they twisted my bio. <laughs> I'm like, okay. It was a, it was a five service in one day church. Preached five services. The first four were back to back to back to back. And I really hardly honestly had any time to minister there, but I knew that God had given me a word. I remember after the third service, I just, just, I had literally time for one word, and I'm just scanning this crowd of three, four thousand people, and the Lord pointed one girl out, and I asked her to come up, and very simply, I just said, the Lord is delivering you and freeing your mind right now in the name of Jesus, and you've been struggling with suicide, and the Lord says he's come to set you free. Bam, she hits the ground. Afterward, I find out she just got out of the psych ward the night before. And the church had been praying for her deliverance for months. And so the pastor jumps up there and says, come out for an experience at night. So they call it, come out for an experience. <laughs> so literally, the night service, I'm just walking around standing people up one by one in this massive auditorium. Just pro- They'd never even been around it. Just encounter 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 never forget he walks up and he says later ladies and gentlemen this man is a prophet of God it, not, nothing nothing to do with me beloved we have all these people oh you know this city's too religious God can't move here I, I can't stand that Walk all these places, brother, you don't know the the religious history you know the driest place is catch the fire quickest don't don't forget acts 2 took place in jerusalem it doesn't get any more religious than that come on who's with me tonight well nothing can happen under president obama's reign anybody ever hear a nero Or maybe the guy that killed John the Baptist. Who are we kidding? A third great awakening is coming to America. And God is looking for a people right now that are going to see the shift and not care what it costs them. Their heart's cry is, I don't know what it's going to cost, but I'm not missing out.
Routine is the number one reason why God can be absent and no one knows it. Can I kick over a few more idols and then we'll close? Routine is the number one reason why God could be absent his manifest presence and no one even knows it. I believe routine is the breeding ground of the religious spirit. We can have business as usual or we can go for radical renewal. We desperately need gatherings where individuals are coming ready to participate rather than spectate. Love it. I'm telling you, some of the charismatic Pentecostal, there is such a stench of spiritual pride. It's unbelievable. Oh, those evangelicals, those Presbyterians, those. Bro, your church is dead too. (laughs) At least they're willing to admit they don't believe in it. You can tell why I get invited some places just once. I honestly, I, I just, I don't understand why we claim that we've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Do you speak in tongues? Or are you just good hanging out watching other people do it? You know, you can hang around the fire tonight or you can jump in it. You can, you can stop watching preachers that fire you up and get your preaching on. People come up to me, what is God saying? No, you tell me what God is saying. (laughs) There's more. You know, you know, we're open to the Holy Spirit. That's code word for not. Nothing's happening there. Nowhere in the scripture are we asked to be open to the spirit. We're asked to passionately pursue the spirit. It's called zealously lusting after the spiritual gifts. <laughs> Let it come, Lord. Let's, let's be fools for Christ. Because religion has no hold on me anymore. Let's just believe in what we say we believe in. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And the same resurrection power that's, that, he wrote, that rose from the dead is living on the inside of us. Do we believe in the kingdom or do we not? We're almost there, but I just feel like... Here we go. More, Lord. Oh, those people are really weird. So are you. I keep keep trying to, to encourage the Pentecostal charismatic church. What are we ashamed of? Oh, they're not going to be your friend anymore. They're killing Christians in China. Really, though, in comparison... Oh, they're going to think I'm a lunatic. You are. (laughs) I'm having a really hard time believing in miracles. Listen, you believe that the Holy Spirit impregnated a virgin. (laughs) And you need faith that God can't heal the person next to you? Hello? Hello? Should we go there for I mean, you believe that the Holy Spirit impregnated a virgin named Mary and gave 
birth to the uncreated Son of God. I think sometimes we forget what we signed up for. <laughs> Let's settle the crazy issue at salvation. I'm going to allow God to set me on fire and just invite people to come and watch me burn. I'm not the original author of that, unfortunately. Number two, he wants to challenge our mindsets. It's just going to get better, yo. We're just on the shift part. Lord, we just received the shift tonight. more Lord <laughs> man I, I've had to do some stuff at times that's violated even my theology you know a lot of the encounters that I've had are at the sauna in the gym there's no better place to preach the gospel than when people are in a 120 degree sauna Especially when you're bigger than they are and you're closer to the door. <laughs> Literally, s several months ago, there was a, a guy sitting on the sauna, sitting on the top shelf there. And I just felt like the Lord told me, just start speaking in tongues over him. <laughs> the light was off. <laughs> I just start going, Shandarabha, Shandarabaka. He's in his underwear, just soaked in sweat. And the Holy Spirit began to say to me, I'm about to heal his back. Just lay hands on him. I'm telling you how, how radical is radical. The title of the message was Never, Lord, the Cry of the Religious Spirit. So I'm telling you, in an instant, God healed his back right there. He had been going to physical therapy four days a week. Beloved, people are waiting for the more. They're waiting for an encounter. Will you sell out tonight? John the Baptist, he laid down his life. So that people could encounter Christ. Father, not my will, but yours be done. Number two, he wants to challenge our mindsets. Sometimes the greatest hindrance to a new move of God is the way we think about the old one. Peter felt safe in his traditions. It says he was perplexed in his mind. Without a mindset change, Peter cannot be upgraded. A change of mindset is a prerequisite to a new move of God. Do you have a mindset tonight that's hindering you from experiencing more of God? Just want you to close your eyes for a minute. We're almost done here tonight. Just believe that God wants to pour out the more. Beloved, Ask God to break your boxes right now. God, we just repent. It's repentance that brings refreshing. Let's hear the Lord saying, where can't I go? You say, oh, if, if I talk about you at work, I'll lose my job. Can't I get you another one? Lord, come and shift mindsets. Lord, I just bind the spirit of fear. 
you know, I really sense some people whose parents have been in ministry and you're afraid that you might become as radical as they are. You know, isn't it crazy at football games, the guy that comes full body paint with the rainbow hair, we love to get behind him and cheer him on at a face at a, a football game, but the moment somebody gets crazy for Jesus in church, we got to shut him down. I mean, of all the things that we get greedy about in America, where are those that will get greedy about the presence of God? You know, God is raising up churches that are going to fight for the presence rather than fight for a position in a city. You know, Saul spent his entire life fighting for position, but David gave himself to fight for the presence. What kind of church do you attend? So many churches and ministries that are just warring who has the most people? Who has the best facility? Who cares? If you don't have the presence, you don't have anything. Just ask them for more not right now. God, we just ask for a corporate encounter all over this room. We don't need music. We don't need some emotional spurring. God, we just pray for more. Just hear the Lord saying, the Lord Jesus is saying, I am the more. I am the more. If you come to me, you get everything else. Jesus, we want more of you in our lives. There are some people in this room, you grew up in the church. The Lord is saying to you in love, you're wasting time. There are some young men in this room, God's called you to the ministry and you're running. How much more time do you want to waste? I feel like there are some businessmen in here. You're hiding behind your business. I'm a businessman. No, your first calling is to Christ. But the Lord is calling some fathers in here to become intercessors of their homes. It's time to learn what it means to be a priest. Renewed minds must accompany renewal. Thank you, Lord. I was wondering if I should stop or keep preaching. <laughs> Lord, we just pray for encounters right now. Lord, release the residue of heaven upon us. Love it, how much do you want? No one's holding you back but you. There's nothing more that Jesus can do. It's up to us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. More, Lord. Oh God, we've settled. Let's hear the Lord saying, who's defining normal?
Who's defining normal? Tonya, God is saying to a young man in his 20s right now, I am tracking you down. You've come all the way to Colorado and I'm still tracking you down. You cannot run from me. Just give me your life. Lord is inviting us tonight. If we leave here unchanged, it's on us. Tony, the Lord is drawing a line in the sand and he's saying, come to me. Come to me. Are you weary from religion? Come to me. Not into what your parents brought you up in. Come to me. If you feel like you're supposed to respond to this, I want you to stand right now. It's what I just said. The Lord is just touching people right now. This isn't a salvation call, but I hear the Lord saying, give me your life. I want it all. I want every cent. I want every minute, every second. And I'm not even feeling led to pray. You tell him. You, you tell him right now. I'm just going to wait a few minutes, but you tell him. Ball's in your court, says the Lord. You're waiting on me. I'm waiting on you. God, let repentance sweep this place. Beloved, I'm telling you, we must repent for settling. If you'll only repent, I'll release the refreshing that you're longing for, says the Lord. Jesus, 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 come encounter us tonight. Take us deeper. Oh, there's more, beloved. Come and taste and see that I'm good. I dare you. <sighs> Only I can satisfy. Do I not know every hair on your head? Do I not know when you sit and when you rise? Do I not perceive your thoughts from afar? <sighs> Breath of God. <sighs> the Ruach. <sighs> Breath of God, come. He's brooding over us tonight. More, Lord. Some of us have made those vows in our hearts, and he's breaking them. Lord, I can only go this far. Yeah, in your own strength, but how much more? with my grace. Hear the Lord saying, Beloved, look what you've done so far. Look what you've done, but look what I'm about to do. Oh God, let us not dream too small. Oh God. Oh. 
I feel like the Lord is saying, if your dreams do not require divine intervention, your dream is too small. <sighs> is there any room for me in there? <laughs> oh, it's time for my body to dream God dreams. Oh, it's time for a new song to dream God dreams. It's time for Denver to become dreamers. Not ambition, but God dreams. And Nathan, I just see the Lord saying, you are the more that this region is looking for. And the Lord has just allowed you to go through a season of pruning. And there's just been great discouragement over the lack of progress in so much of the youth in this region. And God is going to use it. It's almost like He's setting you up. Because it's what it's doing is it's stirring a hunger inside of you for encounter. It's like the further that they run away from God, the deeper you're going in God. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the more. Lord, that you would just, Lord, release the more upon his life even now. Lord, that you would raise him up as a sign and a wonder, but also as a sign that would make people wonder. The Lord says that there's a power about your life, but there's also a mysteriousness that will draw youth in. Hear the Lord saying, there's a reason why I spoke in parables. It's okay to preach things that those underneath you don't understand. Allow me to stir the hunger in them. Jesus spoke in parables to draw out the hungry and humble of heart. I feel like the Lord is saying that you're going to release revelation to the youth and young adults. And though it's beyond them. The Lord says, I'll put my spirit within them. Oh, there's more, Nathan. Oh, there's more, and you're going to take groups to find the more in America. And Lord, we just believe you for a vehicle right now in the name of Jesus. Just hear the Lord saying that he's going to provide. I feel like the Lord is saying, you don't even have to worry about your vehicle. I'm going to provide a vehicle to help your dreams come true. And I just see some type of van or bus where it's like the glory train. <laughs> Man, and, and you're going to allow youth. And I just feel like the Lord is calling you the wine smuggler. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to take the wine from New Song and you're going to take it to other parts of the earth. And you're going to take the wine in other parts of the earth and bring it back here. I'm telling you, Denver is destined for the new wine. Hear the Lord saying, Denver will not miss out on the new wine that I'm pouring out. Denver will not miss out on the new wine that I'm pouring out. You've just got to stay yielded. You've just got to stay flexible. Lord, we pray for every pastor and leader in this region. Just help me pray for a minute. God, we just ask, Lord, even on this Saturday night, God, as, as some are preparing, some are in bed, God, we ask that you would encounter every pastor and leader within a hundred mile radius. And God, we ask that you would pour out your spirit upon them. Oh God, we cry out, God, and we say, Oh Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Oh, would you come to them in the night season, God? Oh Lord, would you pour out your spirit upon this region? God, release a season of refreshing. Oh, God, we ask in the name of Jesus for your fire. 
Oh, Lord, send Your fire upon Denver, God. Lord, pour out Your Spirit, God. Rend the heavens and come down. Oh, God, would You destroy ideologies. Oh, Lord, things that set themselves up against the knowledge of You. God, we cry out for revival at Denver Seminary. God, we're asking for 10,000 young adults, young preachers, young teachers that would be burned with Your fire. God, we pray for divine connections even now. God, that You begin to release a prophetic spirit upon the classroom. Oh God, we believe You to scorch and torch that campus. God, we say that where they've gone liberal, God, they'll become charismatic. God, we thank You that the gifts of the Spirit will be in full operation in this region. God, we thank You, Lord, for the new wine. Oh God, we come against that old wineskin. Oh, the Lord's saying, I'm sending people to even plant churches here. Oh, and where they want to go for a seeker-friendly model. Oh, I want to give them the new wine. Oh, this region is ripe for the new wine. But it's time to dig the wells. Oh, it's time to dig the wells. It's time to dig the wells and let me answer by fire. Oh, God, open up this region in the name of Jesus. Oh, the Lord says there's still 7,000 that haven't bowed their knee. Oh, do you think you're the only one? Oh, do you think you're the only ministry, the ministries that are hungry for my spirit? For I say that I've reserved an intercessory army in this region that will contend for the outpouring of my spirit. Oh, you've got to get beyond that victim, that woe is me mentality. And you've got to begin to put your foot to the grind. For this is a season to run, says the Lord. How will they know more? if you don't give them more. Oh. Telling you God is about to send messengers to the Denver region. He's going to send messengers of the more. And I prophesy that even that churches that have not been open to the Holy Ghost will open up their doors and say, come on in because what we're doing isn't working. The Lord is, is literally igniting right now burned out pastors. Just want to challenge some intercessors. We've got to begin to cover the pastors and leaders in this region. What God wants to pour out here is way more than one church. Lord, we just say let these conferences become regional. I believe the Lord is saying you've got to begin to believe me for a facility to host what I want to do here. Dude, I'm telling you, I see it. It's coming. God is going to come and refresh and revive this region. Yes, the darkness is growing, but so is the light. <clears throat> There's no high like the most high. Mm. more Lord God we need to sow into what you're doing Whew, just like the Lord is saying we've got to begin to even sow in financially to what God is doing God use our resources Lord you're blessing some of us why to sow into your kingdom Jesus, let those that carry your word be blessed in this region. God, let those churches that are fighting for your presence experience exponential increase. Did I not raise up Cyrus to fund my kingdom? More, Lord. 
More, Lord. More, Lord. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Son, you're, you're experiencing what it means to be filled, but soon you'll know the overflow. Man, you're messed up. This weekend was the worst and best thing that ever happened to you. You'll never be the same. Lord, release that ache inside of his belly. Lord, release that groan right now. Release that ache for more. God, I feel led to pray right now for our children. Oh, God, not the church Jesus, but a Jesus that's come to encounter them. Oh, God, I cry out on behalf of every lost son or daughter in this room. God, we ask in the name of Jesus, would you come and encounter them? Would you consume them with your love? Would you arrest them in their tracks right now? Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's power. Lord, we just pronounce a reversal in the spirit realm. Lord, where they've been cutting, we prophesy life. Where they don't know who they are, we prophesy identity in Christ. Lord, where they're radically addicted to sexual immorality, Lord, we call them men and women of purity. Lord, where they're still angry at their parents, we prophesy that they'll release that to you tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Just where you're at, just begin to praise the Lord. Thank Him. Lord, we just... Thank you already for what you're doing and what you're going to do. Lord, we rebuke every sickness, every spirit of infirmity, and we tell it to leave this place. We declare that our bodies are well in the name of Jesus. We command backs to straighten in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we command every cell to form to be healed in the name of Jesus. Lord, we rebuke a spirit of unbelief from this place. And we thank you that you're healing minds right now in the name of Jesus. The Lord is healing someone of chronic depression right now in the name of Jesus. You'll no longer have to take medication for I'm radically renewing your mind right now. I'm healing someone's thyroid, says the Lord. I'm releasing a wave of grace in the name of Jesus. I curse migraine headaches and I command them to go in the name of Jesus. I curse nightmares in the name of Jesus. And we just prophesy the life of God into bodies. We speak to ankles and we say be healed. Every torn ligament is healed in the name of Jesus. We prophesy over necks and we say to that stiffness be gone in the name of Jesus. We command shoulders to be in full range of motion. We speak over rotator cuffs. If I'm saying something, just feel it out. Lord, we just ask in the name of Jesus that you would release fire for healing in the name of Jesus from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet. Lord, we command knees to be healed in the name of Jesus. We say that that popping is is done with and there's a strengthening that's coming try it out if you feel like the Lord is touching you I see him touching you all over necks 
backs, shoulders, knees. Those headaches are leaving you in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of fear that was passed down to you from your mother and your grandmother. You'll no longer suffer with confusion and paranoia, but you'll walk in clarity under the anointing of the Spirit. The Lord is healing someone with a learning disability. We just prophesy that there will be an ability also not being able to pay attention. The Lord is speaking over someone and saying, look at me and I'll heal you right now. The Lord is freeing someone from a smoking addiction where when you get anxious or nervous, you pull out those cigarettes again. God is healing you in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We thank you. Oh, we thank you. Who's the Lord touching right now? Just wave at me. Lord, we thank you. He's touching bodies. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We just release the angels right now. We command them to do the bidding of God. I see several angels in this room that have come to heal people. God, in the name of Jesus... In the name of Jesus. Lord is healing diabetes right now. Oh, the Lord is healing somebody right now and saying, You'll not wear your father's armor, you'll wear your own. No. More, Lord. More, Lord. The Lord is healing in a regular heartbeat right now. We just speak the peace of God over your heart right now. <sighs> Testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. More, Lord. More, Lord. See the Lord healing someone's nasal passages right now. In the name of Jesus, be healed. <sighs> Lord is just speaking healing over someone that's eight and nine years old. Every eight and nine year old with the spirit of affliction upon them, we command it to go right now. Jesus, who feels right now that the Lord has physically touched you already? I want you to come down. It's okay, I'm going to pray again, but I just feel like the Lord has already instantaneously healed some people. <sighs> Lord, we just again pray over those shoulders. We command that stiffness, that pain to go in the name of Jesus. Hear the Lord saying to someone, I've done it in the past and I'm doing it again right now. One of somebody's already experienced partial healing in the past. All you guys are felt like you've been healed. Are you, are you with me? Hallelujah. Everyone down here feels like you've experienced a measure of healing tonight. Just very briefly, I repeat, repeat briefly, tell us what's happening. Here you go. Nasal passage, some depression, and the fear and confusion carried down from generations. Thank you, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. There we go. We've got somebody. More, Lord. From the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, you'll no longer be the same again. There it is. You're healed. Feel that? In the name of Jesus, what are you feeling? I am 
ankles. Mm -hmm. Your ankles feel better. Do something that you couldn't do. What couldn't you do? It just was pain. Like jumping. Can you jump? Jump for us. Again. <laughs> Praise God. Just a spirit of fear passed down from generations. So, Lord, we just break that thing off and we command it to leave your life. Pronounce the clarity and direction of God in the name of Jesus. Okay. Who else? Spirit of fear that was passed down from grandmother to mom to me. Be gone in the name of Jesus. diabetes and uh, they took a rib out of me and I feel like it's growing back <laughs> in the name of Jesus we rebuke diabetes we tell it to leave your body we command that rib to go now in the name of Jesus <sighs> more Lord more Lord be healed in the name of Jesus you standing with him uh, a neck injury and related migraine and torn plantar fascia. How are you feeling? Totally well. <laughs> More, Lord. <sighs> More, Lord. <sighs> <laughs> Years ago, God healed my back. I couldn't even walk. And tonight, he's healed my rotator cuff. Hallelujah. We receive this healing in the name of Jesus. More, Lord. More, Lord. There it is. More, Lord. God has healed my heart. I am no longer afraid. I am no longer depressed. And I no longer have sexual morality desires. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, Lord says that you'll preach my gospel. And you'll carry my fire, son. Not just the fire that touches others, but it consumes you inside. Lord says I've placed fathers around you to box you in. See it as a blessing and not a curse. Uh, my nasal, my spine, nightmares, fear, um, I, I, a couple others, uh, migraines. It's too much. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that there's power in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just prophesy life tonight in the name of Jesus, that where the enemy has come in and ravaged God, we prophesy life in the name of Jesus, more Lord. Breath of God, breathe. More Lord. More Lord. Thank you, God. I tore every ligament in my knee, and this is the first time in 10 years I've been able to get down on that knee. Yeah. Also, an ability to focus is return, which I haven't known since I was a child. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you will be my hungry one, son, and you will take my kingdom to the streets, and you will be a bridge for those that have been rejected and forsaken by the church and you will be a bridge to bring healing and restoration and you will unite them as one. Last night um, you spoke about opening ears and my ears opened. I've had plugged pressure in my ears for over a year. Nasal passages in my neck tonight. So you, you couldn't hear and now you're hearing or it was well and I it was very very intense pressure and pain mm -hmm. 
He's healed you, God. We thank you. Thank you for this miracle. Thank you for your healing, God. In the name of Jesus, we ask for more. <sighs> more, Lord. Um, I believe that I just need, I just need healing. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we just take authority over your mind and we say, Satan, be gone in the name of Jesus. It's not time. God, I ask for your fire to run deep and deep and deep. And the Lord says that I'm just even preventing you tonight from it coming out because there's a greater anointing that I want to place upon it. The Lord says you're not just carrying breakthrough for one. You're carrying breakthrough for a generation. It's not flattery. What the devil meant for evil, God's meant for good. And you're going to take other men and women in the clutch of the enemy's hands and pry them loose. And we say, be loosed in the name of Jesus. Be loosed in the name of Jesus. For there's a greater loosing that's coming. Oh, there's a greater deliverance that's coming. Oh, how healed is healed. How healed is healed. Mm, you're going to sit at a counselor's desk. The tables are going to be Not you being counseled, but you counseling others. <sighs> when you tell demons to go, they're going to go. But there's more, says the Lord. There's more. There's more. Go ahead and hear. My shoulders, um, fear and confusion in my knee. You feel like God has healed you already? Yes. Yes, I can move my neck. Your shoulders feel better? Yes. Yes. Tense and tight, and my neck was very sore coming in here. Even lifting my arms, they were very sore to lift my arms. So, we thank you, and you're on the verge of breakthrough, even in the natural. God, we just thank you, Lord, that th this physical healing is prophesying of this natural breakthrough that's coming where you've been up against obstacles. God says, I'm going to be your breakthrough. Just don't take no for an answer. <laughs> there it is. I've been going through school anxiety and dep depression, and I feel better, and cry I'm crying like I never have before, and I feel hit with this momentum of force, of healing, to, and I want to go to school again. More Lord. <sighs> More Lord top of his head to the bottom of his feet we say that this one is yours in the name of Jesus more Lord ma'am here uh, yes um, when I came in tonight I was hurting my feet and my fingers and and I'm on the borderline, and I just want to thank the Lord so much for taking this pain from me because I can't function, and I want to be able to go to church every Sunday without hurting and feeling. So I thank you so much for everything. Yes, and we command the spirit of affliction to leave your life. Do not ever come back again. <sighs> I just felt a real lift of the spirit of heaviness. I've had a lot of different obstacles here recently 
but I just felt just like I lifted up to a different level. I, I believe also a little bit for healing in my sinuses and you mentioned a stiff neck. I, I didn't feel stiff, but I know I have a lot of stiff neck issues, but I'm believing for the Lord to touch me on that. In the name of Jesus, be healed. <sighs> in the name of Jesus, be healed. Clarity in the name of Jesus. Clarity in the name of Jesus. He'll not be hindered any longer. There's a fresh gust of the Spirit. I haven't been feeling very happy for the past year now. I, I hate school. I don't want to go because I'm too, I feel like I'm too stupid. I can't do anything right. I've been feeling pain in my knees and my ankles and my back. And I just feel like my mom hates me and my dad doesn't love me. No one in my family cares. Are you feeling something different tonight? Not really. Let me pray. Father, we just, in the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you for the creativity and the innovation that you've given this sister. And God, I just, just come before you, and I just hear the Lord saying that though even your own family misunderstands you, I understand you. And the little things matter to me. And I just see even just writings and things that you've been doing that even God knows the very things that you're writing behind the scenes. And I just feel like the Lord says, I'm going to use you in, in um, theater. I'm going to use you in even imagery. God is going to give you a voice for the voiceless. And Lord, we just call forth her destiny in the name of Jesus. And we bind depression and confusion, a suicidal spirit we tell it to go in the name of Jesus and we prophesy the life of God over her more Lord more Lord command her knees to be healed in the name of Jesus be loosed in the name of Jesus more Lord more Lord let me feel that more Lord Oh, Lord, just receive it. I've been having a really hard, powerful thoughts of suicide for the past three months. And I have scars on my wrist where I cut last weekend when I got back from youth group because I just felt like crap. And I just want those scars to be healed and not to have those thoughts ever again. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus that there's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. And we just command Satan to let loose of you in the name of Jesus. We just bind the Antichrist spirit over your life and we command it to go. And we release an anointing, a breaker anointing. More Lord, more Lord. Let your fire come right now, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I missed anyone. Just really want prayer for my nose. A lot of breathing issues, a lot of things going on. <laughs> they know. <laughs> Lord, in the name of Jesus, we just command this nasal passage to be opened. God, we just prophesy a loosing. Every stiffness leave in the name of Jesus. Pray for the breath of God just to begin to breathe over your nasal passage. More, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Will you guys stand with me tonight? 
I think this is one of those meetings where we don't really even know how much God has done. How many miracles, how many internal healings. God is coming and confirming the preaching of His Word that we might hunger for more. So God, as we leave, we just pray for an impartation of the more. God, I pray that you would reward every person that's come tonight with the gift of hunger. More, Lord, release that insatiable craving that, God, there's got to be more. <sighs> Jesus, we're living to encounter you. I thank you that you are the more. That you are the gateway to every encounter in the kingdom. And God, I pray for those leaving that are still skeptical. Yes, they're here. God, would you continue to pursue them? David said, surely goodness and mercy is following me all the days of my life. I love another translation. It says, surely goodness and mercy are tracking me down into very distant days. You can run, but you can't hide. No one is safe from the love of God. We walk out of here victorious in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. Here's Lauren. Six o'clock tomorrow night. And... Um, 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 my bookstore manager asked me to, uh, if, if you would like, I send out a prophetic moments emailing every now and again. If you want to, you know, be on that list, I also use it to notify of conferences. Our next conference is scheduled for May. We're having Corey Russell from IHOP in, and you'll want to know about that. But you can sign up for that mailing list out there. And my last request before you go is um, we need to get Jeremiah out to get some food tonight and get some rest because there's a long day of ministry tomorrow. So please be nice. And if you can, kind of let us get packed up and get out of here without lining up, all right? Can you do that? All right, love on somebody before you get out of here.